Oh, I had it on mute. Right when I took it off, I realized I probably have this on mute. All right, there we go. The old mute button on some of these headphone jacks. Ah, all right. It's funny, the last like five minutes before I got on, before I turned it on, I was trying to get the uh, headphone jack working. So now we got it. Uh, I have my Discord link here. I'm actually not sure if that's current. Um, let me check real quick. Let me get one. For anyone that wants, I, it's not a super active channel or anything, but I tried again this week. Um, no one responded. I was throwing out there that if we wanted, we could have done like a critique session, and I'm more than willing to set that up for people. Um, or if there's ideas for the stream for you join, you can join the Discord channel just to pretty much talk about that. Um, like I can give you guys a heads up before we start. And if we want to do something particular like that, then cool. But so far, no one's responded for the critique stuff, so maybe it's maybe it's not really a thing. Here, let me make sure this link is up to date. Um, what's up? Welcome. Let me get the invite link copy. All right. Sorry, I'm grabbing the latest Discord link for anyone that would like to join. Actually, I can just put this little thing down here. Anyone that wants to join Discord, they can. Let me edit that, make sure it's up to date. There. Hello, Yetkin, how's it going? Actually, I'm, you know, I was eating these crackers, but I realized I probably shouldn't do it on stream. It'd be awfully loud. So tonight, though, I am representing a ZBrush hat. And a ZBrush water bottle. They sent me a couple things. So I'm rocking them. You know, full advertisement right here, right now, is how we're doing this. Um, so anyways, let's get into this. I'm going to try and hard cut off kind of around midnight tonight. Uh, so just do this for a few hours. I was, I'd be curious for those that are here that might care. Um, I was kind of tired of the night crawler thing. Um, I could keep going on and polish it, but I was thinking tonight to just kind of loosen up and make something new. Um, unless you guys want me to continue Nightcrawler, I, I, I kind of wanted to have just some fun and sculpt like a troll or something, like a bust. You know, just start from a sphere and, and go. Um, or see what you guys think. I have a few notepad things here. Let's start. Let's start with this. I have standard Weird little troll sketch, A. You have more of beefcake troll. This one I'm more uncomfortable with, but maybe it'd be cool. Bird troll. That's what I was thinking was bird troll when I was sketching this. And, um, or I have, um, uh, some other sketches I've done in the past that I could do as well. Main thing is I want to just loosen up and have fun sculpting from scratch. It's the main thing. Nightcrawler is cool. I'm not saying I'm not coming back to it. I just I just got back from vacation and I think to do Nightcrawler I need to prep like some specifics. So like I think it would be good um, Iron Man. I can't do Iron Man. No way. I'm not a hard surface guy. You have to watch somebody else, I think. I'm not that. Um, to do, I think, Nightcrawler further, I probably need to um, uh, just prep some stuff and also do some stuff offline. That's a little more tedious. <laughs> Like, for example, I need to probably just collect some ref for, uh, like, the hands, uh, the swords, set up some, like, proper prep work, I think, and specific things to do for the stream for that one. 
and if I do that, then I think it'd be fine. Um, so yeah, so um, honestly, there's opinions here, but I'm just going to have fun. I'm going to make one of these guys. Let me see here. Which one am I going to pick? I also have, I also have um, these older ones I did sketches of. Let me pull them up. Let me pull them up. One last opinion. Where are they? Yeah, so we just got back from vacation. Uh, I was up in Oregon visiting my family in Bend, Oregon, which is a really nice place. There's a Sony studio up there, actually. Sony Bend, which I should actually hit those guys up. I went a few years back, and... And they just released Days Gone. I don't know if anybody's played that. But anyways, we went up to the Redwoods. Um, sorry, we went up to Bend, Oregon. Then we drove back down and stopped at Crater Lake, which was really cool. If any of you have been there. It's the first time I've actually seen Crater Lake. It's essentially an old volcano that collapsed in on itself and left a huge crater. And it filled up with water only through rain and snow. There's no natural lakes or, I mean, sorry, rivers or anything to go into it. And it's the deepest lake in the U.S. It's one of the deepest in the world. And it's really cool because it's super, super blue. And I guess it's some of the purest water you can be in in the world because they don't really do anything in there. Sorry, I was looking for my Instagram thing here. So yeah, it was really cool. Oh, you know, that's another idea too. So, so and then from there, as I find these photos, um, we went down to, oh, you know, this could be fun, like a little frog creature thing. That could be cool. Then we went down to um, the Redwood National Parks which was very fun. Those trees are amazing. If you guys can ever get out to them, they're really cool. You know, I thought I had some other troll sketches on here. I did. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so here's my last thought is there's... <laughs> this little dude, which is kind of more like a frog thing. I just think he's a funny little body. Okay, actually I need to see my thing so I make sure I show it to you guys correct. One sec. All right. Uh, all right, where is it? Oh, Duke. This little guy. He's kind of like um, like a little sp sprite, sprite, no spirit. I don't know. Little dude. I could do him too. We could block in like this body and head and eyes and stuff, do like creature forms and these little little wings and just block it all out. It actually could be pretty fun. But the main thing I want to do is have a good time here. So let's do if there is no opinion here, I'm going to go with I'm going lean between this bird troll, this bird thing. Or this amphibious thing? Any opinions? If not, I might do this bird thing. Just a bust. I could do this just tonight, I think. I actually think I might be able to. Because if we do it fast enough, we can maybe even put some colors on it and stuff. It'd be kind of fun. And doing the beak, a um, little more challenging maybe for me than just doing like an old head. And... This I want to um, to have fun with. All right, uh, have any of you guys been to uh, Redwoods before? I uh, I last year a funny story is I, may, I don't know if I mentioned this on the stream before, maybe before I went on our vacation, but for those of you who may or may not have heard it, last year was one of the first times I truly felt like I have three kids, and um, they're right now six, four, and one and a half and um, I truly felt like a 
a dad moment last year. We again, we usually every summer we go and um, here, let me take a picture of this and I can import it to ZBrush so you guys can have an idea of what I'm doing. Um, and also, I don't have to look down at it. That'll be good. As you can see, I wasn't that prepped coming back from vacation. That's also why I hadn't streamed. So here I am. I did at work. I was doing post-it note sketch and prep. So, anyways, last year I snapped. Went up to Oregon as usual. A bunch of my family got sick while in Oregon, and then we proceeded to drive to the Redwoods, thinking our family was fine. Well, when we got there, my wife got mega sick. And so we drove in, got to this place that's like uh, Paul Bunyan. If you aren't familiar with the Paul Bunyan story, if you're from the U.S., it's, it's like a, a, tall, a tall tale. It's like this giant um, uh, lumberjack guy, right? And so they have this statue in the Redwoods that's like, I don't know how tall it is, maybe like 50 feet maybe taller than that, 70, 80 feet, I don't know. And um, we get there, we go to the, check out some big trees, and um, my wife is like, I feel terrible. Can you take me to the hotel? So we went to the hotel, and she just puked all night. And she caught the bug, which is like this bad stomach bug. And so the next morning, she's just like feeling atrocious. And she's like, I just want to go home and I'm like oh man and we're in the redwoods I've never been there before and um and so like we uh I'm like all right well sounds good and I I go to the scenic route to get out of the redwoods because I'm like well if I'm going to go I'm just going to drive straight home and it's about 12 hour drive back to LA and um so I stop. I, I there's like this giant tree. It's like this beautiful drive through this scenic thing, and um, and we get out. And I'm like, does anyone want to go see the tree like with me, like the kids or anyone? It's like one of the biggest trees in the world. Anybody? And they're like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm good. I was just like, wow. It may. It was like I wanted to shed a tear. <sighs> because my kids did not care. My wife was sick. And I was in the redwoods, and there's nothing I could do about it. Uh oh. Did my restream chat on my end, I think, just crashed? What the? It's updating restream, which is the chat application. So for a minute, I won't see the chat myself, nor will you guys, I think. It's up. I don't know why it decided to update. Oh, it's loading back in. Here it comes. There we are. Cool. All right, so now I can see your guys chat again. All right, let's do this. I got myself a sphere. So anyways, yeah, last year was, that was my first dad, one of my first major dad things. But it's all good, so we decided to go back this year. And we made it. No one was too sick. All was well. All right, so let's think this through. Let's do this, bird. Bird is the word. Indeed. Can someone type something just to make sure this chat's working? Oh, my spotlight projection is on. Just to make sure I'm seeing your guys' chat. If anyone could type something, that would be cool. Because I'm not seeing anything. Hmm. I'm assuming one of you guys typed something. Other not other if not, there we go. There we go. Midnight, thank you. You came through for me. Alright, it's working. Alright, first thing I think I'm gonna do on this guy is set up Yeah, it's working, it's working now. I see it's coming in. I don't know if it was working at first, but now it is. We're all good. I'm back. Um, first, I'm probably going to just set up um, more eyes here. Let's see how far we can take this tonight. Ideally, ideally we will... 
make this thing a bust. Because we have what? What time is it? If I do hard cut off, hour and 40 minutes, let's see what we can do. If anything, we'll go the next night. We can make like a cool render of it or something. And every year, I think like I bring my sketch stuff with me. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to draw and paint. It's going to be great. And I don't. I don't know why I think I'm going to do that when I go on vacation. Especially with, to my family when we're just uh, hanging out. So anyways, I had a good time. We went to the Redwoods, like I said, Crater Lake, Oregon. Oregon for 4th of July is really cool, especially Bend. Anyone here do anything cool for 4th of July? I um, We let off fireworks which was awesome. It's always good. In Oregon, you can do decent fireworks, which is awesome. All right, let's get this out. Basically, we'll get this bird beacon stuff pretty quick. I think will be the goal. So what's new with you guys? Any of you do the King Arthur challenge? I actually need to go over and see where it ended because I was kind of out. Or is it still going? Is it, did it end the end of um, June? I actually don't know since I'm not doing it. I'm curious if anyone did anything. I've actually done very few challenges. I, I think I did a challenge like when I first started out. Um, I should figure out what that challenge was that I, I did. Those things are really cool. It's amazing the stuff people make. So typically when I do speed sculpts, I actually, not even speed sculpts, honestly, this is just kind of how I work. I try to block in as fast as I can the character. Um, I like using Sculptress for this now. It's not always the best for everyone unless you're comfortable at this point. I think i got to make bigger eyes. I'm going to restart chat here real quick just to make sure this is working. If you guys aren't chatting, it's okay. I just want to make sure because a couple of you normally chat a little bit more. I want to make sure on my end it's actually coming through because I'm not seeing much. Let's try this real quick. I don't know if restream chat, how it works. Let me try. All right, restream. All right, cool. All right, we'll see if that helps or not. I mean, maybe we just don't have, have a chatty group tonight, which is okay. Not a big deal. Uh, chat is silent. Okay, so it is just silent. All right, I'll just I'll just keep saying nonsense on here. You know. So yeah, I really try not to get too tight on this stuff for anyone that uh, is wondering. And honestly, it, the only negative to using Sculptress at this stage is um, you can kind of get caught up in details a little bit too easily. So you really have to be diligent not to do that. Really try and get just structure in place. Otherwise, you'll find yourself. Um, let me look at like a, a bird ref real fast. Just a quick reference shot of a beak. Otherwise, I might uh, forget some basics. Let me gather a cool beak here. 
All right, here's two good images. I mainly just need to remind myself of some of the basic, oh, here's a good one, structure. You know what, I really like, I wish you guys could see my browser. I was reading up on why certain stuff doesn't show up on streams. And because I'm on a laptop and there's the dedicated graphics card and the um, integrated graphics card, it really struggles, I guess, some of the streaming software to know how to use both. So I might always just have this problem. All right, here we are though. Bam, bam. So one th cool thing I've found out about the redwoods when I was there is there's two trees. One is the tallest tree in the world, um, and they actually don't tell you where that one is, which I think is kind of cool. Mainly I, I have a feeling just because they don't want um, it getting messed with. You know, they don't want probably people to mess with it. Even if most people have good intentions, there might be some that don't. And then there's also the biggest five vo volume. So not necessarily the tallest, but just like the biggest. It's also up there in the national parks. And uh, they too don't tell you where that one is either. Which is pretty cool. So what I was trying to remember is the uh, kind of this basic triangle shape right here. It's kind of narrow through the top. You have this like kind of nasal cavity you'll see like in a lot of dinosaurs and stuff right here. Then you'll have the nose little thingy that goes right here. And then this hard beak on the end. So there's like this bone and then there's like this tooth, not tooth, but like fingernail type stuff on the end. So bone clones. Look at this bone clones here. If you guys haven't been on their, their website, they're in LA. They're actually a company that clones bones. It's really cool. The other thing I learned, I didn't realize how, and I was actually looking at this today on some maps, the Redwoods, um, how much of it was deforested back in like the 40s and 50s when there was like a housing boom. People moved out for the gold rush um, in the West when gold was hit, you know, out here. And, um, and then there's a ton of people out here all of a sudden. And so like they started just cutting trees down, you know, for wood, which makes sense. And but the amount that was cut down on the redwoods is crazy. It was something like 80 to 90 percent. And so I was looking at a map today because I was really curious um, how much that looked like on a map, and it was, it was a lot. 80 90 percent is a lot, to say the least. But they're slowly growing back. It's going to take a while, some of them. But at least they're at least they're growing back. I don't know what this guy's body's going to look like. So we will not worry about it yet. What I will worry about, though, is... Actually, no, I'm going to keep this simple right now. Use my own advice. Also, we did the drive through tree, where you can drive through the trees. There, there's like, it's still alive, which is crazy. But you can um, drive through it, which is really cool. Our van barely fit. I like to use damn standard for a lot of stuff. Um, it doesn't, oh, because I don't have anything on. Low, low setting. All right. Do, 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 do. So yes, good vacation for me. How many of you, uh, I, I'm not going to talk about this on the channel right now, but other than I'm just curious, I, we, my wife and I finished um, Stranger Things season three last night. I wish I could talk about it, but all I'll say is I watched it, and 
I like Stranger Things. That's all I'll say. Anybody else? I'm just going to keep... I got my ZBrush bottle here. That's all I need. My beak is way off <clears throat> scale. I probably could do one of those things where you use a new camera system or something and set up a camera with my little sketch. So according to this little angle I just made, I need much larger eyes, which actually makes sense. My sketch has much bigger eyes. I want this guy to be kind of funny. So, I'm gonna pull ears in back here. Let's get some skull going on. There's the back of the jaw right here. It's important to know where that is. Kind of sharpen this up a little. It's a little narrow in the front. Any of y'all going to uh, Comic-Con? I think that starts with tomorrow. Something like that. My specs for my machine. Yes, I can tell you. Let me look. System. It is. This is actually a pretty good laptop because it's my work laptop. So you don't need this. Um, ZBrush is primarily, honestly, it's pretty optimal if you have any somewhat recent processor. It's it's all processor intensive. So anyways, let's see here. We got, I'm on Windows 10. Um, I got a Intel i7. It's a 2.6 gigahertz processor. So i7 is pretty normal, right? Um, this is also, I'm on a laptop, so nothing crazy. However, I have a decent graphics card on here, I think, and a lot of RAM. So yeah, 32 gigs of RAM, which is, at this point, nothing too insane. And uh, let's see. Where is my graphics card? Doesn't mention it here. Got an NVIDIA. I know I have an NVIDIA card. Hmm. Let me see if I can find out real quick. NVIDIA. Let's see here. I'm not sure. Windows 10 confuses me. If I, if anyone could tell me where to find it. If I type in like NVIDIA control panel, which I know I have, it doesn't actually come up. It goes to like internet searches, which I think is really bizarre. Um, I have to find it like a different way. But yeah, so like I said, an i7, um, 2.6, 32 gigs of RAM, and some graphics card. I, I Actually, I have a Quadro card, I know, on this, which is kind of crazy. Um, that's like a high-end card that you don't necessarily even need. You can get just, you know, current gaming cards. If you're on desktop, this shouldn't be too bad. But uh, yeah, laptop, it's kind of a beefy laptop, actually. All right, let's try and pull some ears out. You know, I Comic-Con, my wife and I were just talking. If you guys want to hear a story while I do this, I will share it. Um, yes, you're welcome, Reza. If you guys have any other questions, specs, things like that, let me know. Anything, industry questions, sculpting questions, um, you know, whatever. For the most part, whatever. I won't answer everything, of course. Um, anyways, I'll, if, uh, 
Comic Con's always an interesting year time it comes around for my wife and I because um and I I don't think my wife's boyfriend at the time was watching now, but if he is, um you can hear this story too. It was ten years ago. It's all good at this point. Anyways, um so when I met my wife, she's actually dating someone. And so I was like, oh, man, that sucks. Um, of course she is. And so, and that was fine. Like, I respected that. Um, and I knew her family had um, some of her family's uh, actors. And she kind of grew up in L.A. and the industry and stuff. Um, Trent to the Troll, I love ZBrush. Just wanted to say that. Been learning it since December last year. A few hours a day, been fantastic. Yeah, ZBrush is awesome. It's really uh, easy to use. Actually, I shouldn't say that. There's a lot to learn, but it's really just inviting. Like, the simple mechanics of ZBrush are fun, like what I'm doing. And you really just have to get better at sculpting, and that's it, right? The tools are pretty good, especially if you haven't used other 3D software. If it's just like all you've used, it's not too foreign. Then this is this is like a bird head with a ears. Kind of funny. I don't know where to put these. Anyways, um, again, yeah, keep questions coming if you guys have them. Otherwise, I'm just going to talk while I sculpt. So, yeah, anyways, she was dating someone. And I was like, well, that stinks. Uh, what tools do I use for posing? All right, keep the questions coming. I'll stop this story. Um, for posing, depends. If I'm just posing a ZBrush model, I personally just, um, your dope pencil, you're going to have to wait to hear how ZBrush is involved with this story with my wife. Um, so posing, I use, honestly, I use Transpose Master. I, I just straight pose stuff that way. Um, I have sometimes done basic things like, I know you can do rigs in ZBrush. Um, I'm more comfortable in Maya with that stuff. So like, I'll sometimes even just take a quick thing in a Maya, make a rig and pose out a quick rough and then fix, sculpt fix all of that, you know? Uh in here but for the most part I just use transpose master honestly uh, if it's for a game character like uh, something out of a game I'll typically use the game rig you know which I guess that makes sense and a lot of stuff I pose I typically is game models because they just already are set up that way and so zebra stuff it depends what I'm doing I don't go as crazy with zebrush posing I typically do simpler poses in ZBrush, or just do it at the very end. Like the pose I did for Nightcrawler is all just Transpose Master. If you follow or look at some of the old streams. Um. <laughs> yeah, Trainer, the uh, buttons can be kind of crazy. Uh, ZBrush, even I've been using it now for a long time. I guess like 15 years or so. Well, maybe not ZBrush, actually. ZBrush... Actually, coming up on that, probably. 14 years, 13 years. Um, to this day, I still get confused where some of the buttons are, so don't worry. That's like Photoshop, you know? Same thing. There's a lot going on in here. So... Uh, game rig, I mean... When I say game rig, I'm just talking about like, so like in our games that I've worked on, the character will be rigged already for the game. And that I will use to pose the characters or I'll start from an animator pose and um, adjust the model and stuff so the character looks uh, good for screenshots. So that's what I mean by game rig. Does that make sense for a game rig? I don't know if that answered what you're asking me. Cool. So back to uh, 
Yes, it is easier in respect to wax and traditional sculpting at times. But sometimes, honestly, I, I like in traditional wax to, uh, or just clay to use both hands. It's nice. Um, so anyways, back to Comic-Con. I, like I said, I met my wife and she had a boyfriend. And... I was like, gosh, oh, shoot. And I, and I found that out. I was like, well, all right. Guess I'll see you later. And, and I knew she had a, a film at Comic-Con, like her family put to, was making. It was like a little short film. You could go and see it there. And I had a statue, an Akuma statue. I don't know if any of you have ever seen it, but not the one I made recently, but like it would have been like 10 years ago or so at this point. I made this character for fun, this Akuma, and it got made into like a little statue, a collectible. And they were showing it at Comic-Con. Like, Soda Toys had, I think, a booth. So, like, it was there. And so, um, yeah, it was the first thing I ever did like that, which was cool. And so I showed up, and I knew her film was there. So I went and found where they were, and I sat down and watched their, their movie. And it was cool, and I went up to her, and I was like, hey... You know, like, hey, that's great. You know, good job. It's nice seeing you here. You know, of course, I I was interested in her, but trying to be respectful type of thing, you know. Um, but I had to say hi. And so I went up and said hi, and she was like, to her, her boyfriend, I felt, this, this word's funny. I felt a little bad. Um, she was like, hey, my friend has a statue, you know, in Comic-Con. We should go check it out. And he was like, sure, you know, because he's kind of a Street Fighter fan anyways, I guess. So he's like, yeah, cool, let's go check it out. So we went, we all walked towards it, was talking to her and stuff. And um, and we saw it, and uh, she, um, <laughs> we have this picture that she was like, hey, asked her boyfriend. She's like, do you mind taking a picture <laughs> of us in front of the statue that I made, my friend made? And we have this picture her boyfriend took at Comic-Con of us together in front of the statue. Made in ZBrush. That's where it comes back. Made in ZBrush before... It would have been ZBrush 3 at the time. And the rest is history. It was those sculpting skills, like you said. So anyway, it's not too long after that. Uh, yeah, she broke up with the guy. And then we started dating. Romantic, isn't it? All right, I'm just going to plot out some of this. Sometimes just putting stuff like this into the sculpt helps me just kind of plan some of the key shapes and planes. Yes. She couldn't resist these sculpting skills. Her boyfriend at the time was actually their cinematographer for the show, the film they made. He was a cool guy. He was actually really nice. But I had eyes on my wife. She is awesome. <laughs> it's a funny story, that picture. And I left. I left after that photo. I was like, well, see you around. And I peaced out. And that was that. And we actually, when I first met her, well, I don't need to talk about this more. My wife's awesome, though. We'll be married 10, not 10 years, 9 years here in August. And she's very supportive of all this ZBrushness, making characters and games, which is good. All right, so where are we at on this little guy? <laughs> I feel like my sketch is way better than this little thing so far still. Not that this sketch is amazing, it's just more interesting than what I have at the moment. So let's, I'm just going to get a little slight, 
bust here. You know what I don't have is any music in my background for me. I need to put some on. So you're asking, is there any difference in gaming industry to toy and etc.? I mean, are there specific requirements? Oh, first let me look at trainers. Do I need to learn any software programs? I'm just 3D printing. I don't want to rig the models or anything like that. Just sculpt statues and figures. You can... Okay, I, so I don't work and should be back. I don't know what just happened. It just, for some reason, disconnected my internet. Not sure. Can you guys hear me? Or see me? Ugh. Okay, it's back. Okay, cool. Bummer. Come back, everyone. I don't know why it went down. My internet just went off. I'm back on. All right. Um, what I was saying was... Oh, yeah. Any other programs for 3D printing? Um, no. I think you can pretty much do everything in ZBrush if you're simply just making, um, like, models for print. They have tools for, like, scale. You just got to make sure you set up your scene scale correctly and that sort of thing. I'd say that's the only thing you got to make sure you're doing. Uh, make sure your measurements are accurate, that sort of thing. Yeah, I I can get back to the toy thing. I, I was just commenting on... Um, he's asking, does he need to learn anything else other than ZBrush if he's just printing stuff? Uh, probably not. You can do a lot. If it's a professional industry, then maybe. It's just casual or your own personal stuff. You might not need to. Um, Rez is asking, is there any difference on gaming industry to toy and etc.? I mean, there's a specific requirement. Yeah, um, toys and games, I'd say, are quite different. Um, well, I mean, you're still sculpting and doing all that kind of stuff, you know, but um, it's just a different uh, standards in terms of, I mean, you are using ZBrush. Your sculpting skills are still sculpting skills, right? That does that, that. That's true, but how you make characters, what's important about how you make characters, all that's kind of different. Just the uh, um, process is different, um, and that sort of thing. So yeah, they're they're different, but you're still making characters. It's just it's more like how you'd start a character is going to be different. What you care about on the character is going to be different. Um, how you finish them is different. You know, you have to worry about keys and uh, overlaps and or like undercuts and stuff on toys and figures. Games is a totally different things you're worried about. Um, you might be more worried about game cameras and things. Game obviously for games you have game models, low res models that you don't have in toys at all. Oh, I don't have perspective on. So they're just different. Faye's asking, does do say call you Faye? F-1-E-Y-S, Faye's? Faye ones. I'm trying to think what it might be, Faye. I'm going to call you Faye. If I want to make personal game character, oh, Faye. If I want to make a personal game character for a portfolio and I don't have pre-rig, should I learn rigging in Maya? What's your opinion? No. If you want to make characters, I don't think you need to worry about rigging at all, personally. I would spend all your time and energy on just making awesome just models. Because making a rig at 90... I mean, okay, say this. it's You can learn some basics, and it's fine. I mean, it's useful knowledge, I think. Um, but most of the time, most studios will have someone who's doing that, right? Um, if you want it just to like help you maybe pose a character, which even that I would say you don't have to do, it can be useful for just doing that kind of thing. Um, but it's not a must. I actually don't care. If I look at someone's portfolio and they have nothing posed, I actually do not care at all. 
I just want to see the main things I care about are the sculpt. Like I want I want to see the sculpt. I'm realizing I need to look back at this stuff. It's important. So birds, so the thing I think I'm doing wrong here, if I want this to kind of be more work, they're very forward eyes. So I can narrow this a decent amount and bring the back out more. Let's do that. Um, so the main things I care about in portfolios, if I'm looking at them, are really their eye for sculpting. So like just to see they're, they're just sculpting, period, you can look at someone's work and, and kind of see if they have an eye for things, like a sensibility for what they're making. And then I care also a lot about do they even, like if someone has experience, and I definitely want to see some of their game res stuff, um, like their skills in terms of low poly understanding, the more technical side of game dev, because game development is very technical. And so you need to show some, I think, understanding of that. I think it's pretty important. And then obviously for a portfolio, just seeing some final piece or two of a character. Um, and depending on the stage of your career, what you're applying for, that can mean a few things. If first job, then honestly just one character is really awesome with maybe some sculpting pieces to support it. It's probably enough. Um, you just gotta show potential. If you've been working for a while, then I'd expect more than that. So, yeah. Yeah, just worry about awesome model. Some people, like, some schools and places will have you do, like, full scenes and stuff. And something feels really off about this brush right now. I don't know what it is. I think it's the tip of my, there it is, the tip of my pen was like really sunken in. It was really throwing me. I didn't have full pressure range. Oh, that's so much better. But because I just kind of kept going, I didn't stop and fix it. All right, let's let's sort this eye out. Hmm. Hmm. I think what I want is a much much wider jaw. You can even see in this, like birds, right? They kind of have this like pretty straight line there to the back. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, I just uh, met up not too long ago with a buddy. He was asking me some of these questions about portfolio. And personally, I'm of the mentality of like, just dial in your portfolio specifically for what it is you want to do. You know, don't do like, if you want to be a character artist, I should come to your page and see characters. If you want to work in games, I want to see at least one good game asset that shows you kind of have a basic, decent understanding for like topology, the whole workflow. And then hopefully you do a pretty good job at it. I'd say a hierarchy of what is most important is um, first your aesthetic for like, can you make appealing things? Um, I think it's very important. Second would be technical. Like, do you understand the technical stuff? And then third for me would be the, maybe just what it is you're making interest, right? Uh, you want to hire, it doesn't have to be exactly what you're making, but you know, like, do you like making fantasy characters? You know, like I like making fantasy characters. So I'm going to apply for jobs that are in that realm and if I'm hiring for it, then it same goes for that. Like, does this person show that? And most people, you know, like are typically applying places they would want to work. So like, if you're like, man, I really want to work on fantasy type games, 
and just doing really good versions of those. You know, sometimes people feel like, which I mean, there's some valid validity to like, should I make stuff like Dude in Pants? Because there's so much of it out there. Like, there's practical use cases for I could work at these places if I make Dude in Pants. You know, that's one way to do it. Um, I kind of just always made what I enjoyed to do, what I enjoyed the most, like what inspired me, which I then tend to, I think, have the most energy for that sort of thing. So I probably did my best work, and it wasn't that great early in the early years, trust me. Um, but still, it kept me excited. And, um, yeah. So do what you like. If you like making bird trolls, make bird trolls. Just make a really nice one. Oh, oh also last, the from portfolios train right now. Um, I always tell people, don't worry about making your own designs. Find designs that you like and make those because you're not a designer. There's much better designers. <laughs> um, be good at your craft, I'd say, first. And, you know, you can have a sense, you know, start to grow your sensibilities for what makes good design and your opinion and all that kind of stuff I think is really healthy. But it's such a skill set, um, making good designs, and you don't want a model to fall apart because you're fighting the design. So I recommend to a lot of people, if they're working on portfolio stuff, pick something you like or in some concept artist you really like that inspires you and make their thing, you know, or, or make make a, a character from a, a game you really like or something, right? Or on art station, there's tons of cool stuff. Just hit up the artist and be like, hey, do you mind if I make your character? Most artists are cool and, and think that's awesome. You know, so. All right, my, the, my character still is not as goofy as this drawing, that's for sure. Let's put it over here. Get the hell, head kind of similar size. Let's see. I just my 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 sculptor right now just kind of looks kind of mean. He's kind of mad. I don't need this guy to be mad per se. All right, I'm gonna try and get some simple shapes for this. Oh. Keep that neck relaxed. All right. You know, I didn't play any games at all the, the last two weeks, which was nice, too. Just hung out. Everyone at work is playing Team Fight Tactics. Anyone here? Um, if you're not aware, the auto chess genre is kind of popular right now. I think my I'm just slowing down here for a second and looking. I think what it is is this looks like a little pupil looking out. And um that was not my intention, but I think I'm gonna put it in there because I think I need to see that to get this right. If you guys haven't played a uh, auto chess yet, it's kind of the rave at the moment. I can't decide how much I like it or not. It's a, I'm up in the air. I've, 
played it, I, I get it. I get the appeal. But, I don't know. Don't know if it'll stick for me. It really comes down to a lot of times what my friends are playing. If I have people that also are playing it, I can talk to about it. Then I usually play stuff. Alright. Slowly getting somewhere here. I really want to get this eye socket correct. Hey! And then I want to push some of these shapes a little bit. And then make this weird troll bird thing. We can give it like cool little feathers or something. Coming off the head. Now, let me give it a lower. I know what we probably should do. This is a fun way to do this. And I shall do it. We're going to just duplicate this thing. Now I'm going to, I think I'll make it a little darker. All right. And then we're going to scale it up just a hair. And then I think I'm going to just, you can either sculpt it away or you could just cut it away. I think I'm going to sculpt this away. So basically I'm just going to get a clean um, lower lid. Essentially. So I'm just using the kind of the clay brush to keep one level press. And one way is to actually just cut the sphere. You can just like, I could go and just kind of clip it. Like I could, I, I could just, um, let me think. Because you can clip it in half and you kind of can just rotate it. So like, for example, we could do it this way too. If I want a real just kind of like, so if I want, let me think. This, can I do it like this? If I clip it and then I rotate it, can I then just rotate it? So let's see, you can then kind of rotate, but is that what I'm, I don't know if I'm doing it correct. This kind of works. And you can have a nice clean lip if you want something a little more stylized. Pull this down, out. I'll see this is probably a decent way to go, except for I want mine to kind of go up higher. That's why I might just sculpt it. This is a way to do it though. You can get like a little eyelid like this. That could work. Especially if I keep it simple. Hold on, let me see here. I rotate it a little bit. Actually, this is a good, um, so I probably should do two of these. One is the lower one and one is the upper one. So what we need to define here a little bit is the corners. So if I want this to be the back corner, That's fine. Or do I want to lift this up a little bit and have that like that? I'll give this a little more volume. Let's 
Sorry, I got distracted from my eye corners. So, yeah, if you can define here these little corners, then we can kind of set up the two. Um, I should have duplicated. I guess I could duplicate my main sphere again, though. Get like a little bit of skin here. Let's get our standard brush out. Little dodo bird thing. Maybe that's what this is. It's a dodo bird. What it became. Let's see. I'm trying to think if I want this to be higher and not lower. I don't think so. I kind of like. Do you have any tips for easy ways to set different polygroups? I'm having a hard time making really well formed straight polygroups on like the mouth or around the eyes. Um, I guess it depends what you're trying to do. If I'm trying to get really specific topology for something, then I typically either try to remesh it in a way that will get me those groups like I want so I can then select them or in Maya, I'll, I'll straight up like rebuild the mesh to have those loops that you're talking about. If you're doing it at a really high poly level, then that's a little tricky. I typically control poly groups, and uh, I use it in ways um, because I don't do a lot of creasing and things like that. I just straight sculpt stuff or model stuff. I use them a lot just for selection, like quick hiding and, and whatnot. Um, so I'm not doing anything too crazy, but if I need something clean, like say like around the eye loop or something, I'll I'll often just take some time and I'll kick out like a Z remesher version, and then I'll go into Maya with that Z remeshed version, and then I'll delete the area that's giving me trouble, like around it, and then I'll just I'll retopo that myself, so it's clean loops how I want. And then I bring that back into ZBrush, reproject everything, and then I'll have uh, clean polygroups where I want them to go. Clean lines, if that makes sense. Um, you could probably do the same in ZBrush if you're only going in ZBrush or something. But um, but yeah. All right, let's do this top eyelid. So I think I just need to also pinch this upper eyelid a bit. So it's just a little more narrow. And then we're going to duplicate these again. And we'll color pick fill just so we can kind of, I don't think I actually need to do that at all. Just so we can see the difference, I'm going to scale them up just a little bit. All right, then we're going to chop them off. Uh, let's chop them off kind of like this, I guess. Actually, let's chop them off with the corners in mind. I don't know if this is the correct way I should be doing this. Let's pull them back and up. So my goal is to get this upper eyelid just kind of 
tighten up in here. But this one I want actually well up in here. How do you render your models? Any specific engine or just basic things like image-based renders, key shot? Um, for something like this, I mean, it depends. Like, if you want to do something nice and easy, I actually like key shot for just quick stuff. Obviously, if you own it, it's nice. I like image-based renders for, like, with, like, doing image-based rendering and then just a few, like, studio light setup things, like a key light and... Stuff like that, just because they just look so nice. Like if you're just doing like clay renders, you know, like image-based ones look so good. Like my has Arnold in it. I, I dig that stuff. Um, if I'm doing real-time things and you don't have like an engine from a game, then uh, you know Marmoset's like amazing. It's really great for these things. So, but yeah, I, I like image base. And it, something like this, I might be able to um, do I have key shot on here right now. Let me see. I don't. So what I need to do is maybe next stream or something, I could show some of those things. But I usually just kick out simple renders. I do really a simple like for the at least key shot renders, and even Marmoset's the same. I'll I'll find an image base light setup I like that has the general kind of feel. And then I'll typically knock it down to like, I don't know, 30%. And then um, I'll add like a key like top, like area light up here that kind of casts shadow down over their eyes and things a little bit. And just gets a key directional light I like. And then the ambient obviously is filling a lot of that shadow from the key light. And then if I need to, I'll do like a, like a rim light or something. But like just that key light and just the image-based lighting, you can make stuff look pretty good for just um, posting up work and things. And then if you want to do like portfolio or things like that, then you can spend more time on like really specific lighting and making sure it fits like the piece of it. But even that, I kind of do a similar thing. I, I don't get too crazy, you know, I because you want your model to also be the cool thing. So, um, let me save, because I haven't been. One second. So you want your um, model to be the cool thing, and uh, so you don't also want to do lighting that's so dramatic and crazy, you know. Depending on the piece you're doing, you could do different things, right? Let me do this. Uh, Saving it out, one moment. Naming it Bird Troll. I don't even know if this is a troll, really. So yeah. I mean, there must be some psalms info out there. I, I have a tutorial, now that I'm saying this, not to plug myself, but if you go on my Gumroad page, I actually have a video about how I set it all up. You can see, um, what is it? Let me find it. Which one is it? Yeah, it's the one. So like in here, the, um, the creative character workshop one with this like troll guy, troll guy. Um, I show how I render all that basic thing ultimate package creative character workshop oh I have some ratings oh my goodness my topology one you know what's so funny is I saw this image like this image right here I've made and talk about topology of a finger and like how to do this it like circulated somewhere and I was like wait that's my image. It was in some tutorial on some website. It was rather funny. But anyways, 
Um, you know, I just realized I was talking about that. You probably couldn't see it. If you go to my Gumroad page, you'll see what I'm talking about. I got to figure out how to get this to display my web browser. You are welcome. You are welcome. I don't know. There's probably other stuff out there, you know, but I do know I go over how I do it at least. Um, and it's nothing crazy, honestly. Just simple setups that are kind of clean that showcase your work. You don't want it to take away. You don't want to take it away from your model. I think I feel like I hear my my son or someone get up. Might have. They might have. This is a funny fella. Hmm. I'm just trying to think of what big changes we should make on this. I think maybe I should scale this ear down. It could be fighting. And I think I'm going to merge my eyelids in. I think they're fighting a little bit in terms of. I think you, I try. You try not to do is. Um, have similar sh scale things all the same scale you know like you want your like it's just classic like big medium small kind of stuff so like if the air is kind of fighting with you know this head in terms of priority try and avoid that and that goes down to a lot of your sculpt in general you don't want repeating sizes if possible Thanks, Trenter. Trenter the Troll approves of the Troll Knight. And honestly, a lot of what I think, because like, for example, if you spend the first couple hours not getting ahead of yourself, say on a bus like this, um, and really just focus on the key like shapes and stuff, at this point, like if I get to a point where I'm pretty happy with this and we're like, you know what, this is good, then um, detailing it and getting to the next stages is not as hard. It really is not. Um, because your structure is all there. So it's really not too bad. So just take your time in the early stages. Also be free. Don't, you know, part of what, when you've done it for a while, sculpting, you know, like this. Um, as you do it more and more, you, you get a little more comfortable, which helps you speed up. But I'm not like necessarily sculpting fast or anything, but you just get a little more comfortable with your decisions and things. Just don't rush to detailing too quick. And really, it doesn't take you too long to get to a place that looks decent. And then a lot of the time is spent noodling and, um, and whatnot. All right, so I just dynameshed all this together. Just merged it, dynameshed it, because I, I kind of want just like a clean solo mesh for this. I want to make it feel like it's uh, all part of this. So we can have this overlap. 
or yeah, because I can don't want to overcomplicate this. I'm going to keep it simple. I just want to make it feel like it's compressing. So what I'm going to do, sculpt that in, and have it come back. So we've got to make sure this form feels like it's uh, turning. Always forget what button it is to drag this. That was control. I always think it's control, and then there we go. So if you go transparent, then it's you can actually sculpt through this easier. All right. So now we'll inflate it a little bit right here. This is how we'll get it to feel like it's actually probably what I should do is I need to go a little bit like thick to thin here. So like we can inflate all this like it's compressing down here. Like he's pushing his little eyelid out and then it needs to get kind of tight and more thin as it goes back here. So what we'll do is, I'm going to actually pinch some of this, I think. Let's see. And then round this out, pull this up some. Yeah, this is where you can start to spend your time, which I'm not going to get too deep in, is all this like, uh, once you get your bone, your structure, then you start to really reinforce your bone structure and and uh, start to go over it a lot and clean it all up. I like that I have a sharp beak on the drawing. So let's polish this. Honestly, at this point too, it might be worth remeshing and starting to um, use that mesh to help with some of this polishing and stuff. Because right now, your polish brushes work kind of different when your mesh is all like this. I mean, I dynamesh it, I guess, so it's kind of clean. But um, it'll definitely respond differently if I have a, a clean mesh and how it reacts to the poly flow. I'm going to give it this, like, little... Actually, if I want to feel like a bird, I should have this jawline hit further back. So we should probably pull all of this back like this. This this guy is just weird. Weird dude. So any summer plans for you all? Any vacations? I had a buddy at work who just went to Iceland to tell me how awesome it was, which I would love to do one day. Iceland sounds amazing. We're thinking about doing uh, this place called the Great Wolf Lodge. It's a... Uh, It's a hotel that has a water park in it. And we went with our kids last year and it was so cool. 
they have one of them out here. It's really fun for kids. What's our time looking like? 11.25. We're actually doing okay. Considering all things. Considering all things, we're doing pretty good. All right, let's give them a little nostrils. See, this is where your nostrils actually, okay, let's think. Not that this has to be correct, you know, like perfect anatomical correctness, but you should probably try to think through it a little bit, right? Because this here, where this little hole is for birds, or you'll see little nostrils. <laughs> How much do I care about that? So we have this shape. Then we have, we could do it to where like, it's like a shape. It's a little more structured. And then there's a clear hook at the end. So that way you get this area where it's kind of hollowed out. So what will happen is you kind of actually, this whole area gets a little thinner. And then um, we can put a little nostril in there, I guess. What do bird nostrils look like? I'm going to look real quick on the interwebs. Bird head. Not headquarters. Bird head. Always got to remind yourself with a good ref. Yeah, see. Actually, I should probably pull one up in ZBrush. Let's, let's import one. Some ref. Thanks, D. D Zylon. Welcome. If you just joined, we're just doing this little sketch uh, and uh, troll bird thing tonight for fun. Just like a quick sculpt from scratch. You know, I don't have. Sorry, you guys can't see this right now. I'm looking at bird reference, trying to find one to use. I love this picture of this bird. It's so funny. <laughs> Honestly, that's what I should be going for. I think I need to pull some of this vibe in. All right, let's add it to our... Let's add it to our group of things. What I like about this guy is... Um, one, it's funny. First off, two, this like you have the eyes with the overhang, and then like it gets it's wider up top and narrow at the bottom, which is kind of crazy. It really pushes a wide, wide uh, eye there. I like that guy. Let's do it. My shapes are a little soft right now, uh, honestly. So you can see how narrow the beak is up top and how it gets really wide on the bottom for it. this this bird. You can kind of see it here, how wide the jaw can be and how narrow this can be. So we probably should feel a sense of that somewhat. Uh, I, you know, I read about, so Trainer asked, when I put an image up like you just did and I die mesh it, it cuts the model, slicing it anywhere the model, anywhere the model was under the photo. Is that normal? Um, I read about this recently. It was something that was added, I think, to ZBrush 5. 
or 2018, sorry. And it was intended to be like that. Um, I think there's a way to turn it off. I'm just not sure how. I might, if I die to measure right now, it, it might do it. Let's watch. I was reading about this. All right. Oh, mine didn't do it. I also turned off projection, though. Under brush, but you have to do that regardless. Let's turn it back on. Hmm. I'm not sure. I, I, I do know what you're talking about, though. I was reading about that. Um, and with 2018, I think something changed. I, go on their forums. I know Paul over at Pixelogic. I think I was I think I was seeing something about he was talking about it. I think so. Um, yeah, do a little research. Hopefully, there's some information out there for you. Sorry, I don't have more answers. I kind of want to give them. I know it's not technically correct. I just want to give them a little nostril out here. All right, anyways. Oh yeah, that's what I was doing. Let's try and get a little stronger on our shapes here. Our structure. <laughs> it's getting a little funky. Now it's just getting creepy. Maybe where we were headed was fine. Just needs a clear, like. Clear planes, I think. It's a funny little guy. What a weird thing. All right. Put a f few like little folds in this guy. So I'm still not remeshed. I could. I just have the DynaMesh to mesh still. Actually, it's not that bad looking. Structure's almost there. This funny guy. Let's make the nostril. It's interesting with the the Dynamesh issue because I remember them talking about it and they were talking about how it would be a useful feature and I could see how that could be cool with like using alphas to just cut certain shapes out through Dynamesh and I um, thought the idea was interesting for sure 
kind of like um, what was the feature which I really don't use much where like shadow box kind of, kind of like shadow box like Trying to get a nice plane here. <laughs> so the light catches it all right. And we could put some, uh, all right, let's reinforce all these. Just drawing it in pretty much. And what I could you can do here a little bit is you can kind of pinch some of this together after you draw it in. And it'll kind of help tighten up like if you want to feel like it closes. inflate this around here use my planer or polish sorry to create reinforce some of these planes kind of start making this nice and clean not going for like a, a crazy detailed look What's up, Jupiter? Glad you like them. If you want to know, actually, I don't know the best way, for, other than following me on Instagram, maybe, or joining the Discord. I have the Discord channel, I think I have the link down here, yeah, at the bottom. Uh, it's probably the easiest way to know if I'm streaming. Otherwise, Pixelogic posts the schedule. got to kind of follow but usually on my Instagram I try to post on the stories when I'm about to stream like that day or something or uh, on my uh, uh, discord channel we started Welcome, welcome. Making this bird troll thing. Sketch I did today. We're mixing it up a bit. So probably need this to go. I guess it doesn't matter. So right now this clearly looks like it's like <laughs> this form is not going under that form. That needs work. But it's all good. I could just pinch them a little bit together right now. <laughs> What's my favorite sculpt I've ever done? Um, favorite sculpts I've ever done. I don't know. I've had a lot of fun on some. I've learned a lot through like different stages on others. Like there's the Seder I did for God of War 3 that um oh no oh no what am i doing here um i really liked because uh, andy park designed it and 
it's just a cool design and it, it kind of just came together and then we made a statue of it. Um, I So I've always had fond memories of that one. I don't know who's my favorite, but uh, it's cool. Um, hello Juan, welcome. There's a couple sculpts. <laughs> There's, and I I really like the Seder. It's an old one, but it was just cool. Like it kind of embodies a lot of God of War three. We made it into a statue, or I made it into a statue. It was the first time I did that. Um, I thought it was a lot of fun, and and it it represents a lot of my time there. Um, it's other cool sculpts I really liked. Uh, it's funny, I made this uh, it, for God of War Ascension, I made this female character that um, it was just this female, and I really liked her bone structure of her face and everything and how it came out, and it was a lot of fun. I always really liked that one. It's a funny one. I'd have to pull it up to show you, but I always enjoyed that one. Um, other than that, the Akuma I was talking about earlier, the story, I don't think it's actually, um, especially looking at it now, it's not that amazing of a sculpt, but um, it was the first, like, I, it became a statue, and I really thought that was cool, that it was a toy line or a collectible line. I'm a huge Street Fighter fan, so I really liked doing that. I'd love to do more Street Fighter collectibles. Um, as you know, I did that. If you notice, I did a new Akuma a couple months ago. That I liked actually how that one turned out. It'd be cool to get that to made into something. Um, I don't know. Don't know if that really answers that, but um, but yeah. Trying to think what else. There's just, I don't know, there's a bunch of cool characters out there. For sure. I'm trying to think if I'm like not thinking of any. I'm trying to give them like a little. Feathers or something, Ridge. I don't know if I should do this. <clears throat> oh, thanks, man. Yeah, the Satyrs, um, definitely one of the cooler things I worked on, I think. Because Andy Park, if you don't know who he is too, he was one of the concept artists at the time on God of War. And um, he's he's a great guy. He's like, he did some of the, I think maybe the original Tomb Raider comics. And he's now one of the, you know, he's at Marvel Viz Dev. And so like he designed that Seder and um, he really liked how it turned out to, as well, which is kind of special for me just because he's so awesome. Man, I am not a fan of these little brow things I'm doing at all um, and so it's just kind of a cool thing yeah dude just keep sculpting away and you can do it you can grow a lot surprisingly just look at people's work you like and uh, just keep learning For starting sculpting, which subdivision level is better for sculpting? Well, I don't have, and I don't have a clear direction for these little feather things in my mind right now. How I'm going to do this? I think I'm overthinking it a little bit, a little bit too much. Um, 
I always tell most people, stay as low as you can for as long as possible in subdivision levels. So whatever that means, don't, don't go high. Like, as much as you can, avoid it. Most people are not comfortable at high levels. You'll get lumpy sculpts. The only reason I can kind of manage a little higher in the early stages is just being used to it more. So really work on your key planes, your bone structure. Um, for example, this character, if we want to feel like there's skin stretching and stuff, the bone structure has to be very much in place for that to feel right. And so to do that correctly, typically you want to keep it as low as possible. I know that's not like a specific level. If you want to say specific level, level three, I don't know. Just don't go high really until like everything's there. And then you go up, you know, once you're like, okay, like if you can like look at it from like a distance like this and you're like every, all your stuff's in place how you want it, then um, you're probably okay to go up in, in, in resolution and to keep pushing. But having that bone structure be solid is really important. Yeah, for sure. Do I do commission work? I mean, make a Ninja Turtle. Um, not that often. I don't. I, I honestly, I. I don't have a lot of free time, and the free time that I do have, um, I'm either spending with my family or learning, like lately just trying to improve painting a lot, my painting skills. So I I know myself well enough at this point to try not to fill up my schedule with much of anything else. Now, not to say I never would, but... It's not something I normally do. And also it costs so much, like my time. So your best bet would be as if I made something you liked and then I was like, I don't know, selling it or something. But commission pieces are cool, but I just try to avoid that stuff anymore. I sometimes wish I did more of that because I think it is really cool actually to get involved with the community and make things like that. But um, I think it's good to protect your time, especially if you're already working full time. Since I don't do freelance full time, which a lot of people do who do commission work. All right. This guy's turned out all right. He's a little creepy, but kind of cool. Fun. Yeah, it's easy to burn out. If my living, making a living was purely commission, I'd be like, yeah, of course, dude, let me know. All right, let's get out some. I don't know if you guys use the um, ore brushes at all, but they're really good brushes for doing like uh, cracks and stuff. I'm going to pull some out here. So I'm using the damn standard here for this kind of stuff where I just kind of pull out a plane there. So this is where a remesh would be helpful if I did that. Polishing this now. All right. So let me think here. Like this is if this is actually the jawline. I think I need to adjust this a little bit. So like this needs to feel like it's going back 
under there and not just uh, wherever even though this is making a very straight line Do, 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 do. So we have a little bit of time left. Make sure if you have any questions um, to ask them before the evening is over. I'm going to try not to go so late tonight. All right, where I'm going to the ore brush is what I was just talking about. So I like to use these. I'm loading them up real quick. Uh, there's a bunch of good ones. Let me see here. Orb cracks. Orb. Was it line? Yes. These are just really simple, clean brushes, basically, is what they are. So, for stuff that's a little more stylized, it's like really great. Orb slash. All right, let me see which one I got here. Orb line, orb splash two. Oh, I think that's what I was looking for. Orb, just orb splash one. There we are. All right, so let's remesh this real fast, reproject everything. Or I could just use Sculptress, I guess. All right, cool. Ooh, Sculptress does not work that well with this, actually. Interesting. It does not like it. So what we could do then is probably should remesh this. Or I can subdivide this mesh, which I just did. So basically I'm just going to put some cracks and stuff in here. Some lines. So you should turn on back, back face masking. masking. That'll allow me to uh, make, make some, some of these and not have, have it come all the way through. Hmm. Might I should, should just sculpt this, sharpen, sharpen everything, everything up. Actually, Actually, it can, can be pretty, pretty good for what I just did here. I don't know if you know, like, I, I kind of just dropped it in, in this crack. Kind of reinforced my planes a little bit. Oh, I'm echoing, echoing a bit. Could, could be, be my headset. headset. This is not amazing. Hmm, let, let me think here. Let, let me check my settings just a sec. Not, Not sure, sure what would cause an echo. echo. Is, Is it, it still, still echoing? echoing? Robot, Robot voice. voice. Weird. Weird. Let, Let me see, see here. I don't, don't know what would cause an echo. echo. I, don't I don't have my cell phone anywhere. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Normally, if I have like my sh desktop audio on or the stream up somewhere and it's like, you know, looping. It's okay. Yeah, sorry, I'm not sure. So the, the main thing I'd say about this right now and where it needs probably work this whole thing is it, it so like you can get kind of far like we did in this time. But now if I, I look at this a bit and I look at what I have over here, like there's just aspects that need um, subtleties in terms of getting it to be the same. 
So that's really where I'd spend my time now. Also, like for example, let's pull that up. Pull this down a little. Get a sense of this is a beak that's overlapping. Man, I still, I really want this eye to feel like it's bulging out more. Ooh, I'm just going to pull it out. I think what's throwing me off at this point is this little thing, though. Ah, oh, shoot, look at that. I accidentally, oh, silly me. Silly me. What I probably can do, though, is... Rotate it out of here. Um, can I animate these sculptures? If you set up a rig and stuff for them, you could, I guess. This would just be like the, the start of making a character with a rig. We need to like set this up to be animatable. But someone would just have to, you know, the whole process, you just got to go through, basically. But it's possible, I guess. So I'm trying to get this to where... Um, eye shape itself feels a little bit more round. The other thing that's not selling the pressure that well is this lower lid. Gotta make it really feel like the bone structure is going up in there. And um, this is getting pressed. I love this time of night when people like from Europe start waking up and checking in. It's fun. Do you 3D print your own stuff or do you send it to someone else to have it made? For statues like the Seder and Nakuma. Um, the Seder and Nakuma were sent out. I don't have my own printer. It would be fun. I just haven't been able to justify it for myself yet. You know, it would be awesome. Okay. Well, this has been pretty fun. Quick sculpts. I have to do this again on another one. Or take something like this next time. Uh, we could take it to, like, another level of finish. Maybe like poly paint it and um, render it and stuff. Er, it's bad. The photon nest, it's only like 300 bucks. Yeah, I know some of these printers have got. Um, pretty good on pricing actually like not that crazy anymore and when you're getting now to like the like that 300 price point like you're talking about that that's that's getting close enough towards like oh, maybe I should try one because it'd be fun like this kind of stuff just be fun to print out you know just to screw around with or like the the um latest Akuma I made. My buddy's supposed to print it. I'm waiting on him to get his his new form labs in. 
and I, I really look forward to that. Actually, I need to, now I'm saying that I need to follow up with him and see what's going on there. Yeah, the size structures need some work. But anyways, here's this guy. I, I don't think I'm going to go too late today, tonight, everyone. It's, it is midnight already for me. I've noticed when I stay up really late, it really catches up with me the next couple days. But I'm here every other week pretty much. I wasn't last because I was on vacation. But hopefully I'll be back into the swing of things every other Tuesday night. Um, again, if any of you want to join our Discord channel, there's not, like I said, it's not like a chitty chat group. But it's mainly, I'll get on there and I'll say, hey, I'm about to stream tomorrow or whatever. Come join if you want a reminder. Um, or I, the past couple times I've asked if people wanted critiques on their models, which I'm more than happy. Like, I, I think it'd be fun the first hour or so to do like critique session. Uh, but no one has seemed to want to do that yet. I, people have said that, but, um, you know, people actually have to divvy up their stuff for me to give you feedback on. So on my Discord, I've been saying like, hey, if you want, hit me up. I'll give you a Dropbox folder. We can put it in, and during the stream, we could do feedback. I usually find that useful for people. Um, let me give you the link real fast. I don't have fancy stuff coming up on Twitch or anything for Discord, but I can give you the link here. One second. Here it is. Yeah. But yeah, thanks everyone for hanging out tonight. Um, hopefully you enjoyed just doing this bus from scratch. Actually, we can, let me save real quick. And um, I think I can, can I like play it back through history? History forward. Hold on, let me save this out real fast. I'm going to try this. Can I play it forward? Movie. Forward history. Go. I, I feel like I get crashes with this stuff all the time. Let's see what happens. I think it's just recording it. It's not actually playing it. Hmm. Uh, do I have an Instagram? Yes, you can. You can look um, uh, for just art of Katen. I think it's at the bottom of the screen right there. Is it not? Art of Katen should be. Do you see it there, Juan? Or, let me do one better for you. One sec. But yeah, I'm, it's just Art of Caton. K-A-T-O-N. I was going to load it up and show you. but I'm waiting for this movie to end. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Look at it go. It's jittering. What's it doing? Four minute video. Why is it going so slow? I wonder if it actually plays back like this. Because if it played back like this, man, that would be... Uh, that'd be atrocious. Have any of you guys used this feature much? This record forward history thing? Like, are there settings I can set? Yeah, if you go into movie, well, you you have to have history. So, like, you see how I have the history bar up top? Those little notches? You can um, play back history. Since I did, didn't crash or I, I've had this open the whole time. But, man, this is horrendous to watch. If, if this is how it's done. 
Oh my goodness. I might have to walk away from this. I can't put you all through this. Let me see if there's some settings real quick. All right, let's go back. So yeah, you can check out the history here. So we can just do it ourselves. Boom. There it is. It's actually really amazing how fast this does this. I. I Oh, 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 it's pretty incredible. Um, could I use this to make 3D things for a game? Um, I use it for games, but not for game assets. So, uh, you'll use it to sculpt, you know, details or something for a character. But you still have to use something like typically like Maya and other stuff for games. But if if you don't, I mean that's a deep that's a that's a deep question. Basically, you you probably would need more than ZBrush for a game. Most likely, it depends your output though. Depends your output. But if you're just needing to make the high res asset, then yeah, of course. But if you're wanting to do more than that, you're gonna probably need more. All right, let's see here real quick. Um, so yeah, if you're wondering that forward history is what I was just doing. Um, we got, I was not recording a time lapse, so I didn't capture in this. There's backwards history, turntable. And then uh, I'm going to delete the video I just made. So I'm curious uh, if there's some forward history settings because that looks really bad. I don't know if anyone in here has experience with this. I think what I'm going to do when I leave here, walk away, is I'm going to play forward history and then go to bed and then see in the morning what it does. Maybe I'll post it if it's smooth. Not seeing it. Title image off. I was turned title image off. Overlay image is off. And then I'm going to hit forward history. I shouldn't have put these little cracks in here yet because um, it makes the other stuff, it starts to look like, oh, it's supposed to be detailed or something. And yeah, I'm not there yet. What's up? Hello. I'm actually about to head out for the night. Uh, yeah, let me give you a rundown of the evening. Hold on. Since you just joined us. Here we go. Here's the last two hours of our time, or hour and a half, or whatever it was. You know, actually, right around here, something kind of interesting about this. Anyways, we kept going. And this is where we ended up tonight. Just did a fun sketch tonight. And that's that. All right, I think I'm going to head out for the evening, everyone. Thank you for hanging out. Again, um, join the Discord channel if, like I said, you want to know when I'm about to stream or, um, like I've been mentioning, the uh, critique sessions. Um, I'm still down to do those for people that want to do them. But that's where we can communicate and prep for that. Like I said, I'm not like super chit-chatty on there, but... It is a location to get that going. So join me on there. Um, and there's the channel name again. Thanks, Churi. Churi, however it's said, appreciate it. Um, but yeah, thanks everyone again for coming tonight. Sorry it's not longer, but I got to call it quits, I think, this evening. Let's make this, let's see here. See if I, this is what I do. I'll just keep going if, if I'm not careful. I think this beak here actually needs, I'm like looking at my drawing. I think this actually needs to be um, longer. I wonder if I can just like smooth it out and we can scale it all up, move it down like this. I don't know. All right.
thank you, everybody. I'll catch you later, all right? Have a good night. Thank you. Bye.